so why is the ice is so important? It always has been. And going back to, I would say, Douglas Jardine and the friction that that caused in body line, and then the little ashes urn, which is a tiny piece of stuff, which has been around for years, and you can see the captains get hold of it. It's only about that big, and how much it means to the captains. It's just one of those things that has stayed with us, and it's great rivalry in any sport, that if you go England, Australia, head to head, it's serious. I toured in, in 1974-5. Memories of that tour, getting cleaned up by Jeff Thompson, coming up against a fantastic team, Thompson and Lily for a pair. The Chapels, Ian Chappell, who's become a really good friend, captain of Australia. Rodney Marsh, who was this gnarled wicketkeeper. They give us a good hiding, they beat us 4-1. And it was the first time that I'd ever been out of England. I'd never been out of England prior to that, so you know, I found it quite hot. You might think that the ashes then and now are totally different. They're not. It's exactly the same. Right now, and coming up 2013, the lads that play, and I'd give anything to still be playing, they're the custodians of the game. Going way back, there would be two other teams who would be battling it out. But it's the here and now, and right now, England, they're pretty good. Is there a change now in Ashes preparation? Is there something that stands out that you can say, well, that never used to happen? I think the fitness of the players is quite thorough. I think the skills are about the same. The rivalry is definitely the same. And then you get into an era where it's shame war, one player dominating which he did and then you come to now that it's two teams just going head to head so th there's nothing really changes the rivalry is always there oh, oh, oh. so who are the special players the special england australia players down the ages well you go back to body line and jardine and then donald bradman who was in that fantastic player bradman you move on a pace and you get into people like Dennis Compton from England and then into the era that, that I played in and the Chapels and Jeff Thompson, Dennis Lilly, Tony Gregg, all wonderful characters, Alan Knott, Derek Underwood. And then you keep moving forward into Willis, Bob Willis, Ian Botham, memorable players, fantastic players, Mike Gatting, David Gower. And you move on again into the modern era and you can't forget, you cannot leave out Andrew Flintoff, who could rise to greatness. Kevin Peterson alongside him, Steve Harmison, Michael Vaughan, Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath for Australia. And it's just endless, these names keep coming. And there will be a star that comes through in 2013. <laughs> So to 2013, let's get the crystal ball out to who's going to be the stars. I think that one Joe Root seems to be a very special player for England. Michael Clark, captain of Australia, has to do it. I would say that the batting is not as strong as it has been in recent years, so there'll be a lot on, on Michael Clark. Uh, for England, also Matt Pryor seems to be a massive player in at number seven as good as it gets as a wicketkeeper batsman i'm saving the best to last who have england got that australia have got nowhere near graham swan off spin you heard it here first graham swan to be leading wicket taker in the ashes so 2013 what are going to be the key areas what about the pitches that they play on I think one player stands out, standout player is Graham Swan because Australia could have four left-handed batsmen in the top seven. They could also play a left-arm seamer which will create rough for Graham Swan uh, to bowl into. Also, I think that England, being at home, will ask the groundsman to produce very dry pitches, quite slow, which brings Swan into the game very, very early. So when you're at home, you've got a little chance that you can manoeuvre the pitch if you like, it'll be different out in Australia, they'll want quick, fast, bouncy pitches. Uh, but in England, I think they'll be tailor-made to accommodate Graham Swan. So what's at stake for the winners and losers? 
For the winners, it's indescribable. For the losers, I'll mention one name. One of the greatest players that we've ever seen. Captain Australia, Ricky Ponty. Playing down at Surrey for a little while now. One of the best players ever, Ricky Ponty. Captain Australia and lost. And he said he's never, ever felt an emptiness like it. You've got to win. So what's my favourite ground in England for the Ashes? Well, you've got to say Lords. Nothing better than walking through the long room onto the turf and you've got a tear in your eye. You've got to really get yourself together. Great place for England. Like a bull ring, the atmosphere is incredible. It's like fighting talk, if you like, is Edge Baston. But we ain't playing there. So we move on to places like Old Trafford. And that's just been rejuvenated and it's going to be a fantastic ground. And I'm a bit biased because I played there. And you always get a great game of cricket there and wonderful support. And then you turn up at the Oval where it's a great pitch, it spins, wonderful atmosphere. So I haven't really got one that I could say, oh, that's the be all and end all. And then you've got to think about playing at new venues, like up at Chesterley Street in Durham. So that's going to be uh, such an adventure for all the players.